Sports washing is a term used to describe the practice of individuals, groups, corporations, or governments using sports to improve reputations tarnished by wrongdoing, a form of propaganda. Sports washing can be accomplished through hosting sporting events, purchasing or sponsoring sporting teams. The biggest sensation of all time in the sports world was the agreement of Cristiano Ronaldo to play in Saudi Arabia's league for over $500 million in just two years. But that's not the end. Teams in the Saudi league have spent more than a billion in fees this summer, catapulting them among the biggest spenders in global soccer. Labeled the rage on the Red Sea, the boxing stars Anthony Joshua against Yusik was one of the most eagerly anticipated rematches in recent times. But can you find where it took place? Yes, at King Abdullah's sports city in Jeddah, city in the Saudi Arabia. This is just one part of a multi-billion dollar push by Saudi Arabia into global sports. Backed by Mohammed bin Salman, known as MBS, the country's crown prince and the ruler. It goes far beyond soccer and boxing and is roiling global golf, Formula 1 motor racing, basketball and more. His ambition is to use sport to modernize Saudi Arabia and to transform the outside world perception of the desert kingdom of 36 million people. But what's the hidden face behind that? Saudi Arabia struck Donald Trump's ego. The Saudis understood from the start that the President Trump craved flattery and respect. And taking advantage of this friendship, they tried to attack Qatar, a tiny energy-rich emirate in the Persian Gulf. The Saudis moved to punish and isolate Qatar with the reason for its support of Islamist groups and its refusal to go along with a Saudi-led campaign against Iran. By the end of his two-day visit, Trump had become Saudi Arabia's cheerleader and he aligned US foreign policy with the kingdom's vision of the Middle East. The Saudis decided to give Trump an extravagant welcome, the kind of deference he would never get at home. The seats of Riyadh were filled with billboards of Trump and Saudi King Salman. The Ritz Carlton Hotel, for example, where the president and his entire state projected a portrait of Trump onto its exterior, stretching for five floors. Most of all, Saudi leaders convinced Trump that they value and respect him far more than his predecessor, Barack Obama. Hours after the Saudis announced their campaign to isolate Qatar with the permission of President Trump, the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and the Defense Secretary Jim Mattis hinted that Qatar is longtime American ally and home to the largest U.S. military base in the region, encouraged the parties to sit down together to address the differences, and the attack never happened. All this hatred towards Qatar came because they won the right to host the soccer 2022 World Cup. After that, everything changed in the Arab countries, especially in the Saudi Arabia, and the Envy royal family must do something to regain the primacy. They promised to pay for all Greece and Egypt infrastructure, in exchange for Athens signing up the joint 2030 World Cup bid. In exchange, the Saudis would get to stage three quarters of all the matches under the proposed deal. The dramatic offer, worth billions of dollars in construction costs, was discussed in a private conversation between Mohammed bin Salman and Greek Prime Minister Kyriakis Mitsotakis in summer 2022. Saudi Arabia is prepared to fully underwrite the costs of hosting for Greece and Egypt, but 75% of the huge 48-team tournament itself would be held in the Gulf state. This megabox offer to the Greece is feeding up criticism that Saudi Arabia is effectively attempting to use its astronomical wealth to buy the World Cup by creating a transcontinental coalition to cleverly take advantage of the voting system. Holding the World Cup would be the culmination of Saudi Arabia's ambitious strategy to dominate major sporting events. Successes include winning the rights to host World Championship boxing bouts, European football and Formula One motor races while creating its own Rebel Golf Tour. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund also bought a prominent English football club and the country will host Football Asians Cup for the first time in 2027. But Saudi Arabia's desire to stage the World Cup goes beyond reasons of sporting prestige. They are strategically trying to position itself as an Afro-Euro-Asian hub, the center of a new world order. This positioning would enable Saudi Arabia to exert significant power 
and influence across a vast geographic era, which it is seeking to achieve by building relationships with key partners. The multipolar stage of a World Cup with Egypt and Greece would be neither altruism nor largis, rather it would form part of a wider plan, which the government in Riyadh is enabling through the potential gifting of stadiums. The decision on World Cup 2030 hosting will be made in 2024, with a bidding process set to open officially later this year. Mohammed bin Salman is a massive gamer, says CEO of Savvy. But do you know what is Savvy? Savvy Games Group is a games and esports company formed with a mission to drive the long term growth and development of esports and the broader games industry worldwide. Saudi Arabia has spent almost $8 billion acquiring and building stakes in gaming companies across the globe in the past 18 months as a part of Turbocharged Investment Spree with the aim of becoming a dominant force in the growing entertainment industry. Launched in 2022, SEV is wholly owned by Saudi Arabia's $650 billion public investment fund and chaired by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who said his aim was to transform the kingdom into the ultimate club hub for the games and esports sectors in just seven years. To back his ambitious plans, Savvy has been given a $38 billion war chest. The kingdom aims to become home to 250 gaming companies and studios and create 39,000 jobs, with the industry contributing 1% to gross domestic product by 2030. Officials familiar with the kingdom's plans say more deals are in the pipeline. They say the focus on gaming is part of an overall of the country's economy to diversify beyond oil, leading Saudi Arabia to invest in diverse set of growing industries such as electric vehicle production. The gaming strategy has created ripples in the industry of Riyadh, wise with the giants such as Tencent, Microsoft and Sony, for top talent and intellectual property. Saudi Arabia is making its mark on the gaming industry and the growth of the global gaming industry as a whole, said Vincent Wong, general manager at Tencent Games. Gaming is popular in Saudi Arabia, where 70% of its population of 36 million people is under the age of 35. A similar percentage of its citizens identify as gamers, according to Saudi gaming officials, while Prince Mohammed Salman is an avowed gamer. It is an extremely exciting market, very young nation with a highly engaged gaming community. The kingdom wants to leverage its financial clout to build a sizable stake in the gaming sector, which according to Industry Tracker is worth over $200 billion. Last year predicted global video games revenue could surpass $300 billion and account for more than a tenth of total entertainment and media spending by 2026. The Saudi Arabian regime and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has realized that sport provides a fantastic vehicle for political imagining and for gaining political goodwill. Through sport, you can stay out of the normal political spotlight and bin Salman also uses sporting events to create new diplomatic relations and new trade agreements attract tourists and generally uses sports as a focal point for the position in the international society that the regime attempts to craft. Therefore, the Saudi Arabian regime is in this for the long run. The question is how the sports world will deal with a regime that has a human rights record like Saudi Arabia's and that engages and invests so much in the world of sports. For now, it appears that the sports world has rolled out of the red carpet.